Hi, welcome to the Odessa Adaptive Sessions for the Vector Virtual Week 2020. My name is Sebastian Ziegler and I'm Solution Manager for the Timing and Tracing Topics. And today I would like to give you an introduction into the topic managing the runtime behavior of Odessa Adaptive ECUs, especially focusing today on measuring and evaluating the dynamic aspects of the OS and the adaptive stacks. Let's have a look at what we are going to do today. So it's about understanding the orders are adaptive's real-time ECU behavior is quite necessary in my opinion, but it's challenging. And that's for the following reasons. At first, there is a dynamic instead of a static scheduling as you have it in classic orders are. You have service-oriented communication where you most probably don't know when this communication will take effect. The CPU frequency are much higher than previously in classic controllers where you just work on some 200 or some 100 megahertz, which can now scale. And additionally, the memory virtualization is another po point making it harder to access data, which is maybe not in the accessible range. So what shall we expect of this virtual session today? I would like to answer the following three questions, actually. I would like to give a brief overview on how to actually measure CPU load in an adaptive system, and how can I calculate the runtime impact of my application? And at least I would also like to mention a way how to do startup measurement on SOCs. Let's have a look at the agenda. At the next chapter, we will take a look at two kind of a measurement approaches where one I would like to highlight, especially in order to fix the, or to answer those questions stated previously. Afterwards, I would like to highlight this technique in an own chapter, which is called tracing in an Odessa adaptive platforms. While the last chapter basically gives an insight how those questions can be answered, uh, namely by also by a tool. And at last but not least, I would also like to summarize the points we did today about the timing measurement approaches. I would like to highlight here the OS scheduling tracing mechanism. So this is quite familiar also in classic at the moment. So what we see here on the left hand side, uh, we will see when we do just now a record in this presentation of a OS scheduling trace, we will see here the record of the events the OS does over here on the right hand side. In the bottom line, on the bottom left, we see the trace events of this OS behavior and what results we can get out of that. And on the right hand side, we see that these measurements are done with OS scheduling hooks and a tracing tool implements them efficiently. So let's simulate the OS. So it activates a process. The process starts to run, maybe gets preempted by some other process or an ISR. It resumes running and then it gets preempted. So now what data can we get out of that? If we have a record of all those state changes, we can summarize, for example, oh, my task was for the process in the adaptive platform was for one millisecond in an activate state. So it was delayed to get started. Additionally, we, could, we will face preemption and response time or other metrics. And since we measured the complete OS, we'll get this information for all the processes available by the OS, including other OS entities. Now, a typical approach, which is also um, based on the timing measurement techniques, is just a simple measurement, meaning you, for example, instrument or signalize start stop measurement points in the code and make it visible to the outside world in some kind of a mechanism. For example, via a message um, on the bus or you signalize it to any hardware pin or whatever. The OS continues its scheduling, so it activates the process. The process starts to run. Now we signalized that the process is now running. The OS continues scheduling. Some high prior stuff comes in between. It continues running and now my adaptive application has finished running and 
this will be recorded by the stop measurement point. Typical approach, basically quite easy to be implemented by, by one another. Um, let's have a look at both techniques, how they compete in this convert in this chapter, basically. So what you get here is the complete execution time from two to five milliseconds in this case. The scheduling tracing on the left-hand side and the runtime measurement on the right-hand side, I would like to compare by the following. At first, by the pros and the cons, uh, but mainly also what questions can I answer as a customer to myself? So when I use one or another uh, measurement approach, what do I get actually from it and what questions can I answer myself? So basically with the OS scheduling approach, I've get by instrumenting the OS, of course, all processes and threads. And therefore, I can utilize this technique to do CPU load calculation. The runtime measurement technique gives me the runtime, of course, between the start and stop point. CPU load can be done, but there you need most probably dedicated start stop points, maybe in the idle task, but then you always don't know whether there's preemption going on or not. So this needs to be a more sophisticated one than just simply start stop. That brings us to the cons, meaning you need here OS hooks and you need high throughput trace tool, which basically is able to record all of those state transitions in order to get the granularity of this information. However, there will be points or there can be points in the software development where such insight is quite helpful. Therefore, with a pure measurement technique, you get less evaluation details and you still need to do some tooling or instrumentation. That means when I want to answer to myself the question, what CPU load does my system have? I would definitely be on a good shape with the scheduling tracing. I can also answer the question, what runtime impact does my application has? And regarding the SOC startup behavior, we'll have a look at the one of the last slides, how we can do this. Um, comparing this to the measurement approach, then CPU load would be difficult or not possible. Additionally, application runtime impact, well, you need a lot of dedicated start-stop measurement points. That means you need to place them in detail and to know where. And startup behavior is also kind of possible. But if when you set, for example, start at uh, the bootloader or and the stop point in the first application you would like to start. Therefore, it's also possible, but most probably you don't know what's happening in between. So therefore, the tracing ap approach applies rather for the questions, what happens in my system? So if I want to get an in-depth understanding, and why is my execution time actually changing? While the other technique just gives me that my execution time is changing. So when I measure one time and with a change in the software again, I see is my execution time changing or is the code section I've instrumented too runtime consuming? Therefore, I would like to focus this tracing technique for all of the adaptive platforms quite in detail. One uh, issue we face for the adaptive platforms, or I would rather say challenging part, is that the Autos adaptive software can have multiple points of effect on the runtime and behavior. That means there could be an application process, there could be a daemon process, there could be different threads, and in between all of that, a lot of syscalls. That means if you want to make aware what is actually the impact? You would need to have a look at the OS and the um, Autosar Adaptive Stack, even though the Autosar Adaptive Stack is quite independent from the OS. That means gaining insight into the ECU is, to my opinion, quite necessary to have a look at mostly all the exception levels available with the tracing tool. And typically, the way to hook in is here the OS. That means you, once the OS schedule something or activates it, you see once a daemon forks, a thread forks out of that and so on. And you can make by that visible what is actually the impact on my system. That means you just need to make the OS tracing available. And for the adaptive stack measurement itself, you could 
still forward trace information simply similar like the start stop measurement points to the tracing tool itself. That leads to the question, what kind of tracing tools are there? So you could have some software based ones, which is already pre-ready to available for Linux and quite suitable the LTTNG, so the Linux Trace Toolkit Next Generation. But of course, you can also instrument the OS with some quite efficient hardware trace mechanisms, especially for development purpose where you don't put a lot of back pressure into the ECU, meaning you don't interfere a lot into the runtime behavior of the ECU. That would be one of those vendors over here. Summarizing, measuring, depending on the development fa phase, you could have multiple different tools available to record the data, saying, it makes sense to track all of the timing behavior than in a tooling, which is basically independent from the measurement setup. And that's what we try to focus here with the TA tool. That means, how can we answer those questions? So we just need to make sure that all the measurements are available. And then we just feed it into the timing tool in order to analyze that kind of information. So answering the question, how much, how do I measure actually my CPU load? Since I've instrumented the complete OS and all the processes, I could say the CPU load is basically 100 minus my idle processes or all the processes belonging to idling in the ECU. That means this can vary throughout the different OSs, but since it's a mathematical expression, you can just simply trace all the processes and threads with the OS. You can calculate it offline and additionally do some heat map evaluation saying that in a certain time span, I have found there was two high values, which is in this example metric table, not the case. Having a look at a second question, how can I calculate the runtime impact of my application? Application process and the daemon or the worker thread execution time and load becomes therefore visible because you could say, I know this daemon and this worker thread belongs to for example, any kind of a background mechanism my application triggers. Therefore, I can summarize all of those effects, either in load mechanism, in, in load quantities or also in timing quantities. The runtime contribution of the software parts can therefore be grouped together, of course, and some OS even provide further impact. That means, for example, the Linux provides hooks to also give you the memory consumption of your tasks, of your processes. That means you could visualize all the processes, even when they fork out with threads. You get the runtimes. For Linux, for example, you get also the memory consumption when they start to allocate dynamic memory. And you can say, I would like to highlight only some parts of this application or group it together and have a look at all of it. Coming to the third question, how do I, can I actually measure the SOC startup behavior. Well, this depends. It's of course quite can be quite tricky because if the startup behavior starts in one core, for example, on a classic core, which then loads the bootloader or some else constellation, which might be possible, then the startup behavior could be measured in a sense that all of them use a unified tracing mechanism and therefore the hardware tracing is quite suitable as you might also see that the Linux tracing tool only could, for example, record the startup behavior in the Linux OS. Depending on what startup behavior is, there is a solution. Depending on the ECU, you could either do the hardware trace or if it's only one, um, you're measuring in one OS, then just simply use the Linux tool, for example, for Linux based systems. That means once you have recorded the trace, like it was done here with the hardware-based tracing mechanism where there were classic and adaptive cores writing to the same hardware trace source, then you can group it together. You can align it basically because they come from the same timestamp source, the same trace source, and then you can basically make visible how long is the chain of events starting up in your complete system. So this example, so the blue line over here is a so-called event chain showing when a classic core starts to communicate with some IP to an adaptive application 
And you see here there's event registration. And then afterwards, the process in the adaptive application is assigned and the summer B communication is established. That means you can make even not only the startup behavior in a way that, okay, I want to measure from the bootloader until the my init process, for example, has started. I could also make it more in-depth and could say, my startup behavior also includes, for example, until the communication is established, and you can make this visible in, in, in a GUI kind of view. So therefore, let's have a look at the summary. My intention was to give an overview about today that there are various runtime measurement tools available. Um, speaking about Linux again, there's perf, there's ftrace, there's ltt and g. So there is a lot of ways one could also write its measurement tool itself, which is quite nice and is uh, definitely a lot of fun. I would like to say that uh, the runtime impact always interferes into the scheduling behavior. That's my impression. That means if you trigger something in between cross cores, between processes, it always will result into the OS and the OS is the first software part which basically recognizes and changes on that. Therefore, to my impression, it makes sense to do OS tracing and, there, and it actually helps to get a system inside while with other techniques, you always only have a look at some, sorry for generalizing, but with some other techniques, you will always get a look at some dedicated parts, depends on the tool, how the tool is shaped. But in the end, it makes sense to my opinion to have a look at the OS tracing. So thank you very much for your time and your interest in that topic. I'm really looking forward to Q&A sessions. I hope I can help you on your questions and inquiries. And I wish you a very pleasant stay and have fun implementing or using whatever kind of runtime measurement in your adaptive stack. Bye.